It's my pleasure to introduce my co-organizer, Jeremy Miller, from uh, the University of per uh, Purdue University. Uh, and he will talk about uh, not the dualizing module of Audifin. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, thanks for letting me invite myself to, to speak. Yeah, so I, I found this quote that I liked from um, a list of problems from uh, Martin Brightson, Karen Vogman uh, assembled on AudFN. And uh, basically, you know, it says we have this family of groups, uh, SLNZ, the mapping class group, and AudFN. And a lot of questions are, uh, or a lot of questions about these groups are motivated by, uh, you know, to what extent do they have similar properties or, or different properties? Yeah, and so that's going to be the, um, the theme of the talk. So we've seen this object, the, uh, the TITS building. So uh, I guess I'm going to define it in a slightly non-standard way. But if you, so you have, um, if, if R is a ring and M is a, uh, is a module, then the, the TITS building of M is the post set of non-trivial uh, summands of sorry, uh, proper uh, non-trivial summands of M. So a, a summand is just a submodule. Uh, uh, yeah, let's see. So uh, N is called a summand of M if there's some complement C such that N internal direct sum C is equal to M. Uh, yeah, and so if uh, if R is a is a field, then complements always exist, and so some ants are the same thing as subspaces. But in general, this is a a different condition. And uh, yeah, so on the odd FN side, we have this. Um, so if G is a group, there's the free factor complex of G. So uh, a subgroup H contained in G is called a free factor. If there's a complementary uh, subgroup C and G, such that G is equal to uh, in H free product C, and this is you know, again internal to, to G. So H and C are both subgroups. It's not an abstract isomorphism. OK, and then the uh, I'll just call it like or, a free factor complex, or maybe sometimes I'll just call it the tits building of, of the group, is just defined to be the uh, the realization of post sets of um, non-trivial proper free factors of G ordered by inclusion. And the tits building for uh, for for so if R is a if R is a Dedekind domain, then it's a Exercise. I guess I could have made it an exercise, but uh, you can check that being the, the data of being a uh, the data of being a summand. If you have a summand of of M, you can uh, you can map that to the um, you can map M to M tensor the field of fractions, and you can map N to N tensor the field of fractions. And that gives you a bijection between subspaces of um, M tensor, the field of fractions, or you know, in this case, gives you a bijection between the tits building of Rn and the tits building of the field of fractions. So the, I guess the upshot is uh, for for Dedekind domains such as the integers, the the tits building is um, the isomorphic to the tits building of the field of fractions. And so the Solomon Tits uh, theorem says it's n minus three connected. And then in the, the odd FN side, Hatcher Vogman proved that the um, Tits building of FN, so, or the free factor complex of FN, is n is also n minus three connected. And you can you can check that in both cases, they're um, n minus two dimensional. So it implies they're homotopy equivalent to wedges of uh, spheres. And we can define uh, I'm just the Steinberg module to be the top homology of um, 
the you know the top reduced homology of these complexes. Okay, and so one of the the main themes in this conference is a duality group. So say a group is a rational duality group if there's some uh, module M. Uh, oh, I guess Peter told me I, for, I should write tensor twisted coefficients on both sides. So yeah, we'll pretend I wrote that, but it, um, what, what should I write? <laughs> yeah, I, maybe I fixed this on a different version. Um, oh, rational with, uh, with, with rational coefficients, yeah. Oh, no, no, you, you said I, I should write, you said I should write this, right? This is what a rational duality group should mean. What is N? N oh. is N is some other. So G and uh, N and M are representations of G. Over Q. Over Q. Yeah, everything is over characteristic zero. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. So M and N are uh, QG modules. One well, M is specifically the dualizing module. Yes. Underneath there. Yeah. Oh yeah. I guess M doesn't need to. Is. Okay. Yeah. Um. This can be a tensor over Z, and then it, it doesn't need to be. Okay. So. Yeah. And so the you know the theorem of Borel Sayer that. Um, We've uh, that lots of people have talked about so far in this conference says that the Steinberg module. Oh yeah, that says that um, SLNR is a is a rational dual, duality group or virtual duality group, and the uh, the dualizing module is the Steinberg module, and the VCD is N choose two. And. Um, Theorem of uh, Vesfina Fein says that odd Fn is a duality group, and the uh, the VCD of odd Fn is two n minus two. And so there's a, a conjecture of um, Patrick Vogman that uh, the this top homology of the free factor complex, the Steinberg uh, module of Fn is the dualizing module of odd Fn. And then the, um, the, main, the main theorem, which is uh, the main theorem is that this is not the case when N is five. So this is all of the new math that I talk about today will be joint with um, uh, Zach Himes and Sam Nariman. Yeah, so maybe, maybe right, if you- Jeremy, uh, what, what was the question? It's not the dualizing module. Is not. Oh, uh, you, you. I must have loaded a version that doesn't. No, no, no the conjecture it. is that it is the dualizing module, but your theory oh. is not. Good point. You. I hate OneNote because, well, I don't know. I swear I, I fixed. OneNote has a mind of its own. I think I fixed this on a different computer. Is, or th this is another typo you pointed out to me that I didn't fix. Or that you pointed out like I, I do, two weeks I do ago. remember pointing this out at another time. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And then I, I did fix it. And then somehow it came back in. Somehow, somehow, like I, yeah, I'm not going to go get another computer to try to load the version where I fixed the typos. So, yeah, but. Peter, you've already found them, so you should be able to <laughs> spot them I again. I what finding this one. <laughs> yes. Okay. okay. Yes, but that, that this is definitely the, the theorem. So, you know, you might say that we shouldn't be calling this the Steinberg module um, because maybe the Steinberg module should be whatever the dualizing module actually is. Um, but I don't have a better name for it, so. For today, at least, I'll, I'll call it the Steinberg module of, of odd FN. So uh, Andrea is asking about the number five, if you know anything about the other numbers, but I think you're getting into that later, right? Yeah. Uh, so it's there's, there's a computer calculation that 
works for number five uh, that other people did, that Karen and Hatcher, uh, Karen and Alan did. Uh, and then we, we show something is always zero and they showed something was not zero for five. And then if it were the dualizing module, then things would line up. But yeah, we, we um, sorry, sorry. I think I misunderstood Andre a little bit. He was asking for smaller than five. Do you know whether it is this dualizing module or not? No, I would assume that like, you don't know anything other than five, right? I don't know anything other than five. Okay. Yeah. I mean, possibly like when N is one or something, you know, it's Z and odd F one, one is, you know, what is it? It's like Z mod two or something. Yeah. You know? So other than maybe for one where everything's completely trivial, we don't, we don't know anything. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I would, I would expect that starting when N is two, it's not the dualizing module, but, but yeah, this theorem is all, all I know. Okay. So the, the, the proof overview is, is okay. Yeah. Uh, oh no, this has some of the edits I wanted. Okay. Um, yeah. So. There's this like using uh, graph complex stuff, um, maybe other techniques also. Uh, a lot of the low degree homology of odd FN has been uh, calculated. So I've copied this table out of um, this paper of um, uh, Jim Conant, uh, Alan Hatcher, Martin Kasabov, and Karen Vogelman. Um, oh yeah, I, I feel like this is like, I was an undergrad at Cornell, and all of these are most of these people are, are Cornell people. So I feel like I'm, I don't know, they're like they taught me classes and stuff. So I'm like, it's like a, this this project is like a homework assignment or something. Okay, um, yeah, but for some, whatever reason, uh, I like having. So this is a homology uh, H I of odd F N. I like having N. Uh, horizontally and I vertically. So if you want, you can look at uh, this transpose table. This will match what, um, like the way Peter's drawn it. So the key thing, so uh, this black line is the VCD. Um, this bottom region is the stable range. Yeah, and so then the key thing is that H, uh, when N is five, this dot, where is this dot here? Um, this dot is non-zero. So uh, the co-dimension one homology of odd F5 is, is non-zero. And um, as far as I know, this is just a calculation. Does this, wait, does this happen again for seven? Okay, maybe it's also not the dualizing module for seven. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm reading the table correctly. Okay. Um, yeah, but so the, so the key thing is that the code dimension one homology of odd F5 is, um, is non-zero with Q coefficients. Everything I say today is Q coefficients. And then, uh, then our, our theorem is that H1 odd Fn with coefficients in the top homology of the free factor complex is always is zero starting from N equals two. So that's the contradiction. So if if it um, if it were a a rational duality group, these two groups would be isomorphic. Um, I guess when n is five, and they're they're not isomorphic. Yeah. So what? So the um, Upshot the Jeremy. Oh, sure. Uh, if for like the Church Putman result is uh, H one is zero for n greater or equal to three. So you improve this by one here. Well, uh, well okay. So odd fn is the analog of GLN. Yeah. And GLN with coefficients in Steinberg vanishes or um, is always zero. That's oh. in a. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, and maybe this is also true for n equals one and zero, but it's not. Um, yeah, and then another comment. So well, there's a subtle fact um, like that the Steinberg module is not is not always the dualizing module of GLN. In particular, it's not the dualizing module of GLN Z uh, when N is even. And so um, you, you have to uh, like tensor with um, representation of the determinant. And so you might say, you might ask, hey, is this not true because of, um, like for that reason, that we should look at, um, so, you know, sort of the, like an SLN analog of odd FN. And I think that that's not what's going on. It's just, it's really that this thing is just not, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, if, even if you, you took an index two subgroup of, of odd FN, then um, I'm, I'm pretty sure it would also, um, you know, the, the, then then you, the vanishing might only happen once n was three, um, but you know five is bigger than three. Also, any any other questions? Oh yeah, uh, uh, I don't know why I have this remark, but yeah. So it's so for the mapping class group. It's known that in the VCD, the homology is zero um, for for large M. And then in co-dimension one, it's it's um, it's non-zero as a result that Soren is talking about. So one might think the same thing happens for odd Fn, and it's just we don't know anything. This I mean we know the you know this low degree calculations show in co-dimension one. It's often non-zero, but we don't know if in the VCD it's always zero. For out FN, it's not always zero in the VCD, uh, but we don't know for odd. Okay, so what's the the proof strategy? The proof strategy, so you know, it's gonna be similar to what Jenny talked about, but we'll, we'll construct a, a a presentation of the um, the, St the Steinberg module. So uh, GN will be generators, RN will be relations. And uh, so these will be flat odd FN mo modules and uh, the covariance will vanish starting at N equals two. And that'll imply that this, um, th that will imply that H1 of odd FN with coefficients in the, in the Steinberg module is zero. Uh, and then you know, that combined with the computer calculation uh, finishes the argument. Yeah, and so just remember the um, the, the, the covariance um, are is just the quotient of a module by the submodule generated by m minus gm, or m is in the module, g is in the group. Okay, and and for for simplicity, I'm gonna I'm gonna focus on how do you construct the generators. This was already known, so our contribution was was the relations. Um, but the the story involving the generators is slightly easier, and the story involving the relations is is similar. Okay, so yeah, so we're I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna give a, a proof that H zero H zero odd F N Steinberg F N is zero. Um, you know, whereas the, the relevant thing is H1, but similar. Okay. So, uh, the, yeah, so if, if you let um, A1 through N, A1 through AN be a basis of FN, uh, then we're going to define SA1 through SAN to be the subcomplex of the um, Tits building of FN generated by non-empty subsets of A1 through AN. So this is exactly, these are exactly analogous to the apartments in the, in the usual tits building. 
Um, so, you know, A1 through AN is a basis. This is the triangle that everyone has been, been drawing, I guess. So I drew it as a hexagon. Okay. And then the you know, proposition is that this is homeomorphic to an N minus two sphere. And, you know, it's, it, as a simplicial complex, the, uh, these apartments, they're, they're isomorphic to a, the very centric subdivision of a simplex minus its top cell. So, you know, that's how you see that it's homeomorphic to a sphere. And so, okay, so we have these subcomplexes, uh, with these subcomplexes, with these, these spheres living in the tits building. And then we just, I'm going to denote the image of the fundamental class as uh, A1 through AN. Yeah, so we have these these apartment classes in the in the Steinberg module, and I'm going to talk about how to see that they uh, they generate the the Steinberg module, and then we'll also check that they vanish in covariance, and that will show uh, that H zero with coefficients in Steinberg is zero. Okay. So there's a, there's a theorem. It's the, the hard work is due to Hatcher and Vogman, but um, I think the maybe the statement first appeared in this paper by uh, Costa, and it just says that the Steinberg module is generated by um, these apartment classes. So this is the this is the analog of the Ash Rudolph theorem. So if you want, you can think of uh, the odd FN as like GLN of a of a Euclidean domain. So you know, you know, so you know, if if odd FN is GLN of a ring, it's GLN of a very nice ring. And in fact, this presentation maybe suggests that it's like GLN of a extremely nice ring because um, this presentation I'm going to talk about doesn't hold for general Euclidean domains. Okay. Um, and can you, sorry, can you show me again what, uh, how the part are like, you have it on a basis is, is a one through a N is a basis. Is that what it says? Any basis. Any basis. Okay. Yeah. You just take a basis of FN and then you, um, this is the sub complex. Mm -hmm. This is the, uh, TN, uh, I don't like the sentence. What, what do I want to say? Sub, uh, it's the full subcomplex on vertices corresponding to um, subgroups generated by your basis. Yeah. I should have drawn this as a triangle to match all the other pictures. Okay. And then the, the, the comment is, just as in, in Jenny's talk, you can flip these these triangles. You know, if you you can get an you know the, you can pick an automorphism of a free group that permutes two of the terms and uh, fixes all of the uh, permutes the first two basis elements and fixes all the remaining basis elements, and that's going to act on your sphere by a degree minus one map. So it'll act on the fundamental class by multiplication by minus one. Um, so yeah, so we have, so once n is two, you have this map that um, flips the first two elements. So it it acts on the fundamental class by minus one. So that tells you that um, uh, this apartment class equals its negative in covariance. By definition of covariance. Uh, elements of the group act trivially. So, you know, this equals its negative. So because two is a unit in Q, this class is zero. Uh, and so like once we once we have this uh, analog of Ash Rudolph, the same argument tells us that uh, the cone variants vanish. Um, yeah, so what are, um, well, what are our theorem? says is that, uh, so, uh, oh yeah, so our, our theorem. Uh, Jeremy, uh, yeah. 
do we do we know whether that is the, whether the in the VCD it always vanishes or not? Do we know? No, we, we don't know. We don't so know. What, what I'm calling Steinberg is the topology of free factors. It's yeah, it's okay. not. Yeah, yeah. It's, we, not, not the, it's not the dualizing uh, module. It's not the dual. Yeah, <laughs> you can object to that choice of notation. I just I'm going to be writing it a lot this talk, so I wanted to give it a reasonable name. But you know, the point of the talk is it's not the dualizing module, and maybe I mean. Okay, so you know maybe we you should think Stein the, the Steinberg should be reserved for the dualizing module. On the other hand, Steinberg modules were first introduced for like GLN of finite fields, and th those aren't you know those aren't duality groups. So and I think it's fine that it's the Steinberg yeah. module. I just wanted to yeah, know what it's, but it's, it's, it's known about the v, uh, the the cohomology in VCD. It yeah, is, no, we don't. Uh, so for odd FN, all the computer calculations seem to show that it's zero in the VCD. For out FN, there's this mysterious class that's non-zero in the VCD. Um, yeah, and so. I don't know. Yeah, here, this is the remark. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know whether in the VCD. Yes, I mean, so everything is consistent with odd FN is the same as the mapping class group. So, you know, computer calculations don't contradict like the co dimension zero homology always being zero and the co dimension one homology being non-zero in infinitely many degrees. But neither of those statements are known. Oh, yeah. Any other questions? Oh yeah, so um, so our, our main uh, our main contribution is that uh, the, the relations in the Steinberg module are the following. So yeah, so we know the Steinberg is generated by these apartment classes and the, the, all of the relations come from the of the following three forms. So the order of the, uh, the elements in a basis only matters up to sign. So you know, if you permute A1 and A2, like I did here, then it multiplies the sphere by a minus sign, but you know it sends the sphere to a sphere. Um, and then it, um, if you replace a basis vector by its its inverse, then you get the same apartment because uh, you know a group generated by an element and its inverse generate the same group. And then the third one is. Um, that is the slightly more complicated thing. I don't know, highlight it, whatever. Um, yeah, this is uh, if you, that if you add, I think highlighting also a good idea. Um, did I write it correctly? Uh, I'll just write it out in the, it's saying we've, we should think of it as, um, so it was A, B, B, C minus A, C plus um, A, B, C is zero. Yeah. So in the the n equals two case, this is the the um, the relation. The, uh, I guess c is c is a times b, and a b a and b are a basis of f two. So this is what this third relation is saying in the um, n equals two case, and this is. Um, yeah. Okay. And so the, 
the upshot is that these relations, uh, when you know these relations, that's similar to constructing a presentation, and then the, these relations vanish in covariance, and that gives you that H1 vanishes. Um, oh yeah, and so what am I? Oh yeah, I shouldn't have written that out. I forgot what my slide says. Oh yeah, so how should you think about um, like, like why, why is this relation true? Well, um, when n is two, this apartment class is a zero sphere. This x comma y is just the point x minus the point y. So if a1, a2 is a basis, you can, uh, uh, you know, this is the fundamental class of a zero sphere minus the fundamental class of a zero sphere plus the fundamental class of another zero sphere. And so what you, in homology, this is just uh, alternating sum of six points and you can just check that it cancels. And it's, um, it's not that much harder in general to check that this is a valid relation. The harder thing is to check that uh, these are all the relations. Yeah. Any questions? Okay. So, yeah, so I'm going to, are there three manifolds? There aren't three manifolds here. Okay, three manifolds are the next one. Yeah, so I'm going to, I guess I wrote this before I knew what Jenny was going to talk about. So a lot of this is, is redundant, but uh, so here's a, here's an obvious theorem. So let S be a set, then the, the discrete set, then the, um, the collection of elements AI minus BI generate the reduced homology of S if and only if the graph with edges AI, BI is, uh, is connected. So like, why do we care about this theorem? So the, the tits building of F2 is, uh, is discrete. You know, it's a wedge of zero spheres. So if we want to generate, you know, so you might say, okay, if I have, um, I have a, a discrete set, how hard can it be to come up with a generating set of H0? The, the, usually what you do is you say, okay, I'm gonna fix this base point X naught, and then I'm just gonna take elements of the form for my generators, X minus X naught. And that, uh, uh, so if you want, you know, that does give you a generating set of reduced homology, and that corresponds to this graph that I just drew is connected. But you, you might want to take, can I click on, uh, A, B, C, what do you need? Uh, D, E. And so, you know, let's say you wanted to know, maybe this is too big, but you wanted to know, hey, is A, A minus B, A minus D, E minus D, D minus C, uh, you know, does this generate, um, the uh, reduced homology, that question, is the same as is the graph is the graph connected? So, if we want to find uh, ge generators of Steinberg Steinberg two, what we need to do is we need to find a a connected graph with vertices, the elements of uh, Tits building of F two. Okay, uh, you know, and this is similar to what Jenny was talking about with, with simplicial complexes. This is, the, I guess, the n equals two case. Okay, so I'm going to call a, um, maybe this conflicts with Jenny's notation, but I'm going to call an element of Fn uh, primitive if it's 
if it's a part of a basis. So like a squared b squared is not primitive because for example, when you when you abelianize, you get two two, which is not a basis of z squared. On the other hand, a b cubed is primitive. A B cubed, comma, what is it? B is a basis. Okay. So um, we're going to define B F2 to be the, um, uh, it's the graph with, with vertices rank one free factors of F2 and edges between um, connecting free factors if and only if F2 is AB. And so what you can think of as, um, so a, uh, a free factor of rank one is the same data as a primitive vector up to uh, taking inverses. So you can think of this BF2 as the graph with edges um, uh, primitive vectors up to uh, taking inverses, and uh, and you have edges whenever they form a basis. And so the um, the zero skeleton of BF two. Let's copy this picture. Oh, no, I have a better picture. Okay, the um, the zero skeleton of BF two is. Um, is just the tits building of F2. And the, the edges in BF2 are exactly our generating set. The edges, you have edges between vertices if they form a basis. I'm gonna be sloppy about the difference between rank one free factors and bases. So in, in, in order to show that um, apartments generate, um, these apartment classes generate the, the tits building. Um, we just need to show that this graph, or you know, in the n equals two case, we just need to show that this graph is connected. Any questions? Oh yeah, one thing to say is there isn't a line connecting B and AB in our graph. Um, because like, you know, uh, B, wait, oh yeah, this isn't a, um, this is not a basis of F2, because there's no way to, uh, is that right? Hopefully that's not a basis. Uh, there's no way to, to, you can't write A as a product of B and ABA. It's also not a basis if you go over to the AB lineization. Uh, oh, because you're saying it's zero, one, and... Two, one. Two, one. Oh, yeah, I was hoping, and the determinant is two. Uh... Well, if I wrote an inverse, then we'd get. Then it's oh, that's still bad. Uh, the, 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 if I try to select, or someone can read off something, tell me that something that's not a. No. There, there are things that abelianize to bases that aren't bases, um, but I didn't draw one. Oh, did someone have a suggestion? So you're looking uh, at. Does it matter for this example? It, it, I mean, it doesn't matter. But yeah, I guess my point was that you don't want, um, you know, like if you said, oh, you know, we just want a generating set of the top homology, top produced homology of this um, space. And then you're like, oh, this space is discrete. So I'm just going to take, like, I know a generating, if I, if I know a, a set, I can just take, I can just pick a base point and um, have all the edges connect to the base point that, you know, that like wouldn't be a good idea because maybe your base point would be B 
and then then you you know you don't you really don't want this edge because it's not a basis because um it's not a there's no there's no element of odd fn that swaps these two elements um so there you know so you don't want this in your generating set there there are elements of odd fn that swap these two elements and swap these two elements. So you know we prefer having these edges as uh, as generators. Okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So in general, there's this partial basis complex free group. So it's a um, graph with edges. Um, graph. Oh wait, what? Is the simplicial complex. Uh, with vertices, uh, primitive primitive vectors up to inverse, and they um, they form a, a simplex if they're uh, a subset of a basis. Yeah, so this is the odd fn analog of what what Jenny talked about, and then there's a, a theorem of Costa that this complex is n minus to connected and using this lemma of Quillen that Jenny talked about, you get that um, the Steinberg module is generated by apartments. This is sort of calling this a corollary is a little bit uh, ahistorical. So what Costa did is he deduced that Stein, the Steinberg module is generated by apartments from, it, from the work of um, Hatcher Vogman and then use that to show high connectivity. But that's a, an aside. Okay, any questions? Okay, yeah, so now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the proof that these uh, complexes are highly connected. So yeah, if you sort of haven't thought about odd fn that much, it might be surprising that three manifolds show up, um, but this is a, is a common, Common occurrence. Yeah, so we're going to let M, M, N, M be the connect sum of N copies of S2 cross S1. And then we're going to remove M um, open balls. So what we should, I'm going to just draw this as if it were a surface of genus N with M boundary components. But what you should sort of think is that in some of the directions that maybe this is an S2 and then in the in this direction it's an S1 I'm not going to I'm not going to draw uh, actual three manifolds okay so we're going to de define this complex so this is um, as far as I know first appeared in uh, work of Hatcher-Rogman that uh, so this y of a three manifold is a simplicial complex with vertices, isotopy classes of embedded non-separating three spheres in M. Uh, and then they form a simplex if um, they can be isotoped to be disjoint, non-separating. And I learned in the uh, exercise session and um, M minus the spheres. Uh, is connected. Not the same as being non-separating. Oh yeah, no. So it's the same as being non-separating. What was I think? What did I screw up? Whatever. I had like a half an hour conversation where I was confused about something. Oh, maybe. Maybe somebody if, else remembers that was in the exercise session with you. Yeah, yeah, that's irrelevant. So, okay, it seems like I have the right definition. Uh, maybe it was like the spheres individually were non-separating, um, but I there's a miscommunication about whether together they should be non-separating. Okay, so we have this picture. Peter complained that the circles aren't drawn in dark enough. So, um, uh, yeah, so th these are all these are all two spheres. So in particular, 
like this direction is an S1, so we don't have, that's not in the complex. So the blue is not in this complex because the blue separates. The, um, is it a problem for your, uh, for your example that they are separating? What's separating? The circ or oh, the, the, yeah, the, the, the point is that the, uh, the orange, green, and red, any two out of those three form a simplex. Oh, but all three of them don't. I see. I understand. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. That was my point. Um, that's, I wrote that over here. The blue, the blue is not a vertex, the red, the green, and uh, the red, the green, and the orange. But also, yeah. Um, it, it, the, yeah, our, our, our vertices and any two of them form an edge, but uh, all three of them do not form a, a two simplex because you know, all three of them together are separating. Okay, so the, um, the proposition, uh, this is, I guess, uh, Hatcher Bogman, that this uh, YM21 is isomorphic to this BF2. Yeah, so what, what's, what's the map? So if you have a, Um, if you have a, a vertex, oh yeah. So what do you do? You know, so if you have a sphere, you send the sphere to the fundamental group of the complement. So yeah, so what we're going to do, oh, maybe I should draw, okay, I'll just draw it. So we, we, have, we have one boundary component, genus two, and we're gonna pick we're gonna pick a base point on the boundary, and then what the map does is it sends this is S, and we're gonna send S to um, to pi one of the uh, the manifold uh, minus S, and that's gonna be a a rank one uh, free factor. Um, so that, you know this is going to be a rank one free factor of pi one of the manifold, which is F two. So the fundamental group of the, these uh, these manifolds are the the free group. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess yeah. In general, pi one of M N M is F N. Okay, and so you you could check that th this map is a is an isomorphism. So in order to know that this graph is connected, we just need to know that this isomorphic graph involving three manifolds is connected. And yeah, so um, I don't know. We like manifolds, so this is progress because we're leaving the world of algebra. And entering the world of manifolds. Okay, so the the way we're going to prove this complex is highly connected is by embedding it into a larger complex that's contractible. So this uh, sphere complex is just a simplicial complex with uh, where the vertices they're uh, embedded two spheres, and they form a simplex if they can be isotope to be disjoint. I guess I should say nothing. Things are things can't be. Um, can't bound balls and they can't be isotopic to the, the boundary. Should have said that here and earlier. So uh, this is a valid simplex. This, this whole thing is a three simplex in S because we've dropped the non-separating condition. So the blue thing is a valid vertex and um, yeah. Okay, and then there's a theorem of Hatcher that this complex is contractible. And so, um, so what we're gonna what we're gonna do to prove that this thing is connected is we're gonna first find a path in this contractible complex 
And then we're going to try to modify the path to uh, be in the graph that we want. And sort of a similar idea works for, for larger n. Okay, so what's the picture? So let's say, okay, uh, I'll just, I don't know if I want this. Okay, so yeah, so let's say we start, start with the blue in Y2, and our goal is to find a path uh, to the gray in Y2. So yeah, uh, so we have this blue point, this gray point, and let's say, you know, so we know that this S complex is contractible, so there exists some path in, F, in S connecting these two points. Uh, so in particular, maybe it's um, this green point. So you, blue to green is a valid edge in S. And um, um, green to gray is a valid edge in S. You might also point out that like, um, I think just the whole edge blue to gray is a valid edge in S, but let's, for the point of exposition, let's pretend this is the path we're given. Okay, so um, so what we want to do is we want to modify this path so that it stays in the separating, uh, so that it, it it's in this Y complex. The Y complex has this condition that uh, all the simplices need to be non-separating. Uh, whereas in S, S, all we need is that they're uh, disjoint. Okay, so let's, um, so the, the proof is uh, via induction on N. So in, in this case, we're going to assume or have already proven that Y M uh, one M is non-empty. So when n is two, we want to prove it's connected. For when n is one, we want to prove it's not empty. So let's uh, let's assume we've already proven this. So um, yeah. So what do you do? You look at the link of the green. The um, the link of the um, of the green is what is that? Um, uh, link of the green, oh, I say, or I want to say, yeah, I want to say that the blue, um, blue and gray live in, uh, you can view them as points, uh, blue and gray, I guess, form an S0, a zero sphere in uh, Y of M minus the green sphere, or from S zero and well, sorry. Or let me let me just say okay. So uh, y uh, sorry m two one minus the green sphere is what what is this? This is equal to. It's it, it's not connected. It's equal to. Um, this three manifold of genus one and one boundary component, and this three manifold of a genus one with two boundary components. So you can what you can do is you can view. So the the blue and the gray are disjoint from S zero. So the blue and the gray form a a zero sphere in Y of these two pieces. So Y M one one star Y M to uh, one, two. In fact, both of them happen to be on this side. The star means uh, simplicial join. And by our induction hypothesis, uh, both induction tells us that each of these complexes is connected. So their join, sorry, each of these complexes is non-empty. So their join is connected. So this is is connected since uh, 
ym11 is, is not empty. Uh, yeah, so because this is, is connected, we can find, so what you do is you replace, you remove the green and replace with a path in, in here. And this path exists because it's, um, this space is connected because each individual space is non empty. So in this particular example, what you do, what one thing you could do is you could, um, um, the path between the, the blue and the gray in, in here could just be this, um, uh, red loop. So what you, you do is, you know, you would, you'd cut out, you'd cut out this region and replace it with this path. And now it ends up, now everything is in, uh, is in Y. So, you know, this, I mean, the, the moral is that this contractible complex helps you find a path. It, you know, it first gives you a path, um, and some bigger complex with vertices that you don't want, but you can, using those vertices, you can find, and induction, you can find vertices you you want. And a similar argument works in, in high dimensions. Um, yeah, and similar argument works to find relations. I think that's all I had to say. Uh, let me again first ask, are there any questions on Zoom? Uh, if that is not immediately the case, uh, are, there, are there questions uh, here in the audience? So, uh, Maybe I have a question. So you could have also, con so con if you if you would have done the same argument with the line in between, then you would have still had them be connected. Like if you had- Yeah, you said like, oh, okay, they're, they're already connected. Yeah. Yeah, so then what you do is, um, you, okay, you'd still, then you'd cut here, you'd cut along, the blue and the gray yeah and then um then you would use you know and, and one of the pieces would be the surface yeah and then uh that's also genus one so it's not empty and then there's something in the lingo then you both. find the red thing and it would still give you the red thing all right but does it have, but it has to be the link then of some, or you, you said something about the link of the green thing, but then the link didn't really play a role, right? Yeah. It, it, um, it, it, it being the link didn't. I, 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 yeah. When I said link, I was about to say something false. I see. <laughs> uh, that happens. Yeah. So, but the, uh, you certainly, it, it's, it's, it's like the, it's the link of the green but then intersected with Y is maybe what I should, something, I should have said something like that. Uh, so I think, it, yeah, it's the, the link of the, the link of simplices in S intersect Y are, are highly connected is I think what we use to make the. Uh, Natalie has a comment. And anyone has a question? Yeah, after Natalie. Yeah, Jeremy, you look for the worst simplices, like as big as possible, the bad simplices. Yeah. And then yeah. the is in the good sim in the good complex. Yeah. By definition of being biggest bad. Y yeah. So your induction is you argue that then you know in that link you have enough mm -hmm. connectivity by induction. Yeah. So your yeah. good vertex, you should have started with a major thing in the I should have. And then the link is empty. Link of the, you know, in your previous case, you should. Wait, wait so you're, you're. I mean, it worked what he did, right? He, were, well, you're, you're saying I screwed up <laughs> what to do with the edge, yeah. like the argument. He just cut something open, and then 
it's connected there. But yeah, maybe there's something more to it in the actual argument. Uh, uh, oh, maybe what Natalie is saying, is this accurate, is that it was an accident that uh, like plugging the red thing in removed all the bad simplices. It should have just lowered the dimension of the bad simplices. That, that like he, here, here we could have just removed the bad edge, but all you'd yeah, and all you'd expect that you'd introduce bad vertices. The link, yeah, the link of that vertex is, yeah, the links link of the green vertex is good also, right? It's in the good synthesis, yeah. So that I yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, definitely. But you definitely want to do it in such a way that the link is already good. Yeah. To intersect, yeah. Oh yeah, well, I guess there's also like if you have two bad vertices in a row, you would do something different. Exactly. If you have two yeah. bad vertices, then you first put a good one in between. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, okay. and you know you could have a longer path than than the original one I drew. All right, we have another question by Benjamin. Well, but actually, I just wanted to ask: Could you say again how does now? What's that present the presentation follow from the, the argument? Could it just, I mean, scroll well, up? Uh, 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 so exactly. you, you come up with a bigger complex. Um, I, you know, you could let like Z, M, N1 be the so sub complex of S, M, N, uh, we'll go with one, um, such that. Uh, what do I want to say? So they're allowed to be, be um, normally I remember things. Uh, oh, oh yes, such that um, <laughs> I, I, either the spheres are non-separating or um, if they are separating, then what do I want to say? I want to say uh, like the, a group of three, right? That are that are doing the separation or something. Yeah, let's follow Peter. Let's do the n equals two case. <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the n equals two case, I'm, I'm going to define this complex B A F two, and this is going to like have maximal uh, simplices. Of the form a b, uh, a comma b comma a b, and then uh, you translate this into uh, some complex involving, or you prove this this complex is highly connected using three manifold stuff. Oh, and how would a b a b translate into uh, spheres? Is there is there a picture for that? That's yeah so then here okay so again i don't i don't know if maybe that's we, we never said how we translate between these right that was kind of magic oh, you, you, you take uh pi one I, of the complement so i guess we want we, we want spheres such that any pair is non-separating any pair is non-separating but together uh, together they're separating. I see. Does that yeah. answer the question, Benjamin? Uh, so he he adds. Yeah, right. Is this the BA version? So, okay. Yeah, yeah. So you also have that complex. You okay? The translation also was okay to me. So, but I think the last. I think the last thing you said was somewhat clearer. So you you're saying that. I mean, this was what I was missing. How how this is a subcomplex then also of. Um, of the sphere system yeah. complex, but okay, you're saying two are what, what was the statement? Uh, Nothing is separating, but whenever you take two, it's separating something. Like so that. these threes, there are three curves yeah. right now that are separating, but if you take one of them out, it is not separating. Okay, and that you take as the definition, then you again embed it into the contractible complex and do a similar argument where you push back uh, spheres some of uh, the. Yeah. Uh, but but, there, but and there's also some complications because 
this like um uh th th this like uh b bfn is not isomorphic as far as i know probably uh to or uh, it's uh, to ymn1 uh for n bigger than 2 is this b is like partial bases and this y is hyperplanes what what did you say the y is I, sorry i just didn't well, the y the y corresponds to hyperplanes so we, there's this convenient fact so if if you take a sphere like pi 1 of m n 1 minus a sphere is going to be fn minus 1 mm -hmm. so it, this uh this y complex is isomorphic to a complex of co-dimension one free factors in fn not partial bases in fn so i'm using the fact that two minus one is one <laughs> like, uh, so there's extra work going from a hyperplane version to a um partial basis version but this is this is similar in spirit to what costa does uh yeah so when n is two you know two minus one is one a hyperplane and a line are the same thing but in, in general there's some some complications involving that all right we have an another question that's really perfect it's not really a question but <clears throat> uh so it was conjectured that Steinberg module should be dualizing module and it's not the case and I mean yeah they, so, I don't know I mean why did they conjecture that I mean does it even act as dualizing module for some coefficients or I mean, uh, I, I mean Karen says she regrets making the conjecture I mean I I know I mean I don't know I mean if it fails for already for n equal five I mean whether I mean was the the conjecture just yeah okay the, 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 the I, I I so like what she said was at that point I don't know her and and Alan like maybe society had a understanding of what the like fortification of outer space was but like at that point maybe she and Alan didn't and so they were just straight going on the okay let's Let's assume everything is as similar as possible to the SLN case. Which is a great strategy. Just don't make conjectures on that, maybe. Um, yeah. But but it's still and maybe they're better guesses, but I don't think I don't think there's any, you know, because of this sort of failure of point duality, I don't think there's there's no, as far as I know, there's no guess that people really believe. There, there may be, there may be better guesses. Um, but yeah. Okay. Is there any more questions? Oh yeah, Andrea. Uh, do you have other another guess of what? the Balassi model could be? Maybe we should. Well, well, uh, well, oh, no, we should. Like... Oh, is there, yeah, so should just go to Benjamin's talk and he'll, okay. is that is that accurate? That you'll? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's maybe one kind of yeah, I, I I would go with I would say that's a better guess, but I would not be particularly optimistic. But I, yeah, I, I, yeah. If I had to make a guess, I would say it's the homology of the boundary of the fortification. But that's probably also not true. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that should be the same as what Benjamin's going to yeah. talk about. But. Yeah, that's roughly what I would say. That that would that would work if if outer space was a manifold, then it would be that, but it's it's not. So you would have to show that you still have Poincaré duality for this non-manifold. 
So one thing to say, if you look at this like last sentence in their quote, you know, that the program is derailed by uncooperative facts, but it's it's still a good idea. So uh, th this all this stuff came out of like a, a attempt to prove home, uh, slope one homological stability fraud FN. And so there, like the free factor complex is useful and these resolutions are useful. So like the, the overall paper won't just be a negative result like, oh, this thing that we thought might be true is not true. Um, so even though, even though this thing is not the dualizing module, resolutions of it still tell you something about the homology of odd FN. Great, are there more questions here or on Zoom? Uh, if not, let's thank uh, Jeremy again.